Hi, this is day 30. I believe it was day 29 yesterday and I screwed up. I said it was day 28, but I'm pretty sure we're in day 30 and today's episode is brought to you by the Greek letter Delta, which you are quite familiar with and which we will be reviving in a big way today. Today, what we want to take a look at, as you can see, the motion of charges in electric fields. Now, why the heck would anyone give a rip about the motion of charges in electric fields. Uh, well, if you've ever had an x-ray taken, uh, it's a good thing that people have cared about this because I think I've mentioned this before, but inside an x-ray machine, what happens is uh, a beam of electrons gets accelerated by an electric field. It strikes a metal target. And when it strikes a metal target, uh, x-rays are given off. Uh, however, the key is the electrons have to be traveling at just the right velocity. Too fast or too slow and it doesn't work. The x-rays aren't produced. Uh, so in order to make sure those electrons are hitting the metallic target at just the right velocity, well, you know, someone's got to know a little bit about how charges travel in electric fields. Uh, another application of charges moving in electric fields is uh, believe it or not, when athletes are tested uh, for banned substances, uh, many times uh, urine samples from the athletes, uh, they are actually ionized and the positive ions are accelerated through an electric field and it's timed how long they take to get through this electric field and the bad, pardon me, the banned substances their molecules are usually bigger, so they take a longer time to get through the electric field. And if that's the case, uh, then they know that uh, the athlete has been cheating. Uh, regardless, uh, we are going to jump right into an example today. To be perfectly honest, absolutely nothing new here today. It's just a question of putting together uh, some things that you already know. So if you look over there, there's the example we're gonna take a look at. It says, uh, find the distance it takes the electron to stop below. And the mass of the electron uh, that's given to us, and that's something you can uh, Google or look up the mass of an electron, the mass of a proton, the mass of, of all these particles are well known. Uh, how those masses are determined is something we'll study very shortly when we talk about the uh, magnetic fields, uh, but regardless, the mass of an electron is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, and here is the situation. You can see we have our favorite piece of electrical apparatus once more, a pair of uh, parallel plates. They are connected to a 500 volt battery. You'll notice the top positive plate, it has a little hole in it. Our electron arrives at this hole in the top plate with a velocity of five times 10 to the six meters per second. And you can imagine what's gonna to happen to this electron as soon as it gets into that space between the plates. Well, the negatives, they're gonna be pushing it up. The positives, they're gonna be pulling it up. Uh, so basically, uh, both the negatives and the, and the positives are opposing this thing's motion so the electron is going to slow down and eventually it's going to stop and we're interested in well what's the stopping distance and that's what we want to figure out oh and one more thing uh, we also know that the plates are a total distance of three centimeters apart okay uh, so how can we do this uh, well how about this uh, the electron it has a lot of kinetic energy here. It has no kinetic energy here. Uh, that's a change in kinetic energy. Uh, remember from the previous unit, uh, if you have a change in kinetic energy, usually there's some work being done. Well, take a look here. As the electron, as it slows down, remember the electric field, the negatives are pushing up on it, the positives are pulling up on it, the electric field is doing work on this electron as it slows down. So the work 
is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. No different from last unit. The work is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay. So how about this? We'll say the work done is going to be equal to the change or the decrease in kinetic energy. Uh, I guess that's where the delta comes in. Because let, let's face it, the decrease in kinetic energy is a change. Uh, I'll tell you what, the last unit when we did this, when we said, uh, you know, W is equal to delta KE, we were very rigorous about uh, saying that delta KE is equal to KE2 minus KE1. And sometimes that turned out to be positive, sometimes that turned out to be negative. Uh, with this uh, unit on electric fields though, we've been more working with a absolute values, not worrying about sign too much except right at the end when it comes time to figure out direction. So we'll, we'll stick with that trend. We'll say the work done is equal to uh, the decrease in kinetic energy. Basically, you know, that's a negative change, but we won't worry about it. Here we go, watch this. So, uh, how much work is done on this electron? Well, work is equal to, uh, you know, force times distance, uh, but I'm gonna have a heck of a time calculating the force. Uh, how about this? The work done is gonna be equal to uh, the charge times the potential difference the charge moves through, right? Work is equal to QV. Uh, the decrease in kinetic energy. Well, uh, the electron, it has uh, a fair bit of kinetic energy right here because it's uh, moving really fast, but when it's here, well, its kinetic energy is basically equal to zero. It's basically lost all its kinetic energy between here and here. So the decrease in kinetic energy, well, that's going to be equal to however much kinetic energy it had right there. And kinetic energy, of course, is equal to one half mv squared. Uh, all right, let's take a look at this equation we have now. Okay. Uh, so uh, the charge that we're dealing with, one electron, one, element, one elementary charge, we know what that is. Okay. The voltage that it's moving through. Well, between there and there, it's not moving through 500 volts, right? 500 volts is between there and there. It's moving through some voltage between there and there. Okay, we don't know what that is. Okay, uh, okay the number half, we know what that is. The mass electron, we know what that is. It's velocity, sure, we know what that is over there. Uh, so take a look, we got an equation. We can solve it for the voltage it's moving through. And from the voltage it's moving through, remember it's not moving through 500 volts, that's from the positive plate to the negative plate, it's just moving through this voltage here, this potential difference here. Okay. If we can figure out uh, that potential difference, we can figure out this distance. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do that. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to rewrite this ever so slightly so I get QV is equal to KE. So I got QV is equal to one half MV squared. Okay. Uh, I'm going to solve this equation for uh, v, uh, v here. So when I solve this equation for V, the Q is going to go over to the other side. It's going to slide downstairs. So I'm looking like this MV squared over 2q. I'm going to substitute in. Okay. Uh, my mass is, what do we got? 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Uh, the velocity squared, well there's my velocity. 5 times 10 to the 6 squared. That's over 2. And then I gotta stick my charge in there. Now remember, your voltage is gonna be in joules per coulomb. So your charge 
has to be in coulombs. One electron, that's one elementary charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So you grind this through your calculator and you get that your voltage is equal to you get that your voltage is equal to 71 volts. In other words, between there and there, the electron is moving through 71 volts of potential difference. Now the question is, what's this distance? Okay, easy enough. Remember, in a situation like this, uh, uh, the voltage is proportional to the distance. So you can write ratios involving voltages and distances. How about this? The little voltage, 71, is to the big voltage, 500, as the little distance, small d, that's what we're interested in, is to the big distance. We're right over there, what do we got? Uh, three centimeters. So you solve this equation, uh, the three goes up to the other side. And I believe this comes out to 0.43 centimeters. Actually, let me quickly just check that. Sorry about this, 3 times 71 divided by 500, yeah, 0.43 centimeters. Okay. Uh, you are good to go. Uh, that's it, just one example today. Uh, you are now ready to tackle the assignment on this, and when you're doing the assignment on this, uh, keep a couple things in mind. Uh, excuse me for one second, I gotta get the assignment in front of me. All right, sorry about that. Yes, when you're doing the assignment uh, on this, uh, don't worry about number seven uh, at all. And uh, number five, you should be able to do 5A pretty easily. Uh, 5B, C, and D, those are gonna be a bit of a challenge. They're actually pretty easy, but it's kind of tricky to see how uh, things work there because if, when you see number five, you'll see you got weird voltages going in different directions. Uh, so for sure, give 5A a shot. Give 5B, C, and D a shot as well, keeping in mind that uh, the calculations to do those, even though they might seem really complicated at first, they're actually pretty much non-existent. I'll actually probably do another video on uh, number five because it's uh, a really good question to understand. There's quite a few concepts there that uh, will, will help you out in the future. Uh, regardless, uh, the sign will be posted, and I'll try and remember to put that in the instructions. Uh, don't do number seven. Make sure you do 5A, 5B, C, and D. Give those a shot, but if you can't see what's going on there, we will go over them. Uh, bye for now.